With an ageing population in the UK, there's a growing need for technology to help people live independently at home for longer. The future is going to be particularly challenging for the health and care sector. We have got an ageing population, we have got significant financial constraints and of course the inexorable rise in long-term conditions is going to put an extra burden, not simply on the sufferers and their families, but on the health and care system. So can we continue to deliver services the way we've done in the past? Clearly not. So how do you do that? Well, supportive technologies are going to be fundamental. Some supportive technologies already exist, telehealth and telecare, but in their current form, they still have significant limitations. One of the key things about home care technologies or telecare or telehealth just now is that there are a lot of solutions out there um, and a lot of them are sort of standalone endpoint solutions that you can buy or you can um, be prescribed it from your social worker. Um, but lots of these bits of kit don't all work together. Um, that's one of the problems. So if you have a heart monitor and a falls monitor, they might not be compatible, so they might interfere with each other. The other major problem is that a lot of them aren't configurable or, or personalizable to the, the user. So a lot of the time the kit is prescribed uh, straight away to the person without actually asking the person which parts of the, the technology would actually work for them. Um, so what we see a lot working with users is bits of technology hidden in drawers or tied up behind curtains um, because the parts of the kit just don't work for that person. So to address future demand for health and social care in the home, new and better integrated technologies are desperately needed. This has been the basis of a collaborative research project called MATCH. MATCH is an acronym, Mobilising Advanced Technologies for Care at Home. But it's not just an arbitrary acronym. The notion was that in, there is a sense in which we are matchmaking. We're matchmaking a number of researchers with different expertise. We're matchmaking a number of different kinds of partners, commercial partners, caregiving partners, informal carers, end users, researchers, policy makers. So there was some real meaning behind MATCH as an acronym. The MATCH project set out to answer a series of questions. What do users want from home care technology? How do you design systems that are easy for people to use and adapt to their own needs? How might these systems be controlled? How might different systems communicate with each other? And how do users communicate with the systems? The idea of the MATCH project was to um, develop technologies and advance them such that people actually wanted them in their home. So to make technology smaller, to make them wireless, to make them uh, more usable, more acceptable and more easily integratable into people's lives essentially. To achieve these goals, four of Scotland's leading universities brought their expertise to the project. The MATCH consortium uh, was originally based around the four universities of Dundee, Edinburgh, Stirling and Glasgow, uh, where four teams with similar and related interests came together to uh, uh, form a, the consortium which would work on various forms of technology that could be applied in the home to help and improve care of uh, older people and disabled people. What we've done particularly at Stirling is to work on what we call a home care system. So this is essentially a computer-based system linked to a whole variety of devices around the home. At Glasgow we're specifically interested in multimodal interaction. Really all that is is multi-sensory interaction with any sort of computer. So instead of everything being purely visual on the screen, you can have speech output or you could have different types of sounds or you could even have vibration output played to the skin. The role of Edinburgh University was to um, look at speech interfaces to telecare. So basically, can we, can we help people talk to the home care services? Or to what extent can home care services give spoken messages? Welcome home, Margaret. Joan called while you were out. Dundee University's uh, involvement has been specifically looking at the data. 
So uh, we've been interested in, okay, we have that technology um, and that technology gives us data. What can we do with that data? How do we understand that? How do we work with that data? And how do we distill out of that data something that contributes to a conversation between one person involved in the care and another person involved in the care? All four centres have used innovative research methods, from drama to engage individuals and carers, to a high-tech doll's house to demonstrate integrated systems. It's hoped that the project will pave the way for a new generation of home care technology. Match has focused on developing research capabilities, so we have not been developing products. What we offer, I hope, is a rather more over-the-horizon look at what the future products will be. So as Match comes to a close, we have an interesting range of research results. We have a range of, I hope, practical and useful technologies. And this is particularly timely because we can then use these to work with companies, to work with care providers, to see these to become the products and the services of the future. And it's providing important evidence for those working to change the current models of care. The MATCH project is actually really important. We're using something that MATCH, that puts a bit of discipline um, around things, puts a degree of realistic challenge and scrutiny uh, that people can actually look at uh, and take stock of and note, actually helps move this agenda forward quite significantly. Because there are a lot of doubters out there. A lot of the doubters are there because they don't understand. Um, we need to move that thinking on, and things like Match are integral in us moving this agenda onto a different level and making the conversations much more meaningful.